Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. This prophet here, he asked that question through the inspiration of God. This is God, he says. Will a man rob God? You better believe he will. Have I robbed God? I'll be the first one to admit it. I have robbed God when I was making tons of money. And at all times, God blessing my family, blessing me in the businesses. I've robbed God many times in giving of my tithes and offerings. When he blessed me with health, when he blessed my family, when he blessed me making hundreds of thousands of dollars, did I rob God? I sure did. I wish to goodness that I could go back and change that. I can't go back. I can't go back and give that. But will a man rob God? I can say they will. People say, well, you know, if I had more money, I'd give it. I was in that boat, and I just robbed him. And I robbed him. Will a man rob God? Yeah. Yeah, he had robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. God said, Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Where do you think the storehouse is? That's the house of God. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. God says, Hey, you prove me. This is one of the places in God where he says, prove me. Prove me. Prove me if you bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse and show, I'll show you that I'll pour out a blessing. I'll pour out a blessing. In Proverbs 3.9, nine, we'll go to Proverbs 3.9. One other place. Proverbs 3.9. Solomon here again says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. Well, what is your substance? Well, that's anything, actually. Anything that's an increase. It don't just have to be money. But it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all that increase. Not what's left over. Well, it's not what's left on the ground. It, it's, it's the first fruits. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. God says, Hey, we're supposed to give our tithing off. A lot of people don't like to hear that in the house of God. I know everybody here tithes, I understand all that. But this is the next point of a fool, though. They don't want to tithe. They'll drop a $3 bill in the plate, so to speak. You say, what's a $3 bill? I'm going to well, exactly. They'll drop a $3 bill in the plate, or a $5 bill, and think they have done God justice. They, they think they're doing God a favor by uh, by giving a few dollars, and they're camping out the church. They'll start the preacher, they'll start the church, and, and let them stumble along. But God's going to take care of us either way. God's going to take care of the church. God's going to take care of his people. But a lot of people, a lot of people, they will rob God in not obeying him. And being a fool in the sense of, uh, of saying, well, I'll keep that. I, I've got to pay a bill. And I've been there. I've been there. Even when I had plenty of money and I didn't have too many bills and I had plenty of money to pay the bills, I still would say, well, I need to pay a bill this week. I'll, I'll, I'll pay. I'll tie next week. I'll, I'll double up. I'll do this. I'll do whatever. And I would always make excuses. And I was a fool. I was a fool in the house of God. Only I was a fool in the, my steps, but I was a fool in my sacrifice. They kind of go hand in hand. And because um, if you don't want to go to the house of God, you should not be sending your tithe most time. And um, what best of all, if your sheep said, Mark, uh, I, I, need to, I need the time. I said, well, I'll get you next week. I'll get you next week. Or, 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 or something like that. It wasn't bad. It was me. I was the one. And then, look over. Uh, the sacrifice of Cain. Remember the sacrifice of Cain? You're not going to return there. Remember, his, his sacrifice was out of works. Now, this is certainly the sacrifice of a fool that wants to uh, offer the sacrifice of works for their for their sin debt. And that's impossible to do. Over in um, Genesis, it talks about Cain who brought his um, his um, his sacrifice to the Lord. And it was of the ground. It was of vegetables and, 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 and fruits, I guess, and all those kind of good things. And nothing wrong with good squash and, and turnips at Mr. Jackie's growing and all that kind of good stuff and good sweet corn and all that stuff. Oh, that's wonderful. That's, it tastes great. God gives us that. But that um, does not have blood in it, by the way. It is, cannot be um, shed for our sins. And he knew that when he did it. But old Abel, he went out and got a, got a lamb or whatever it was. I forget now. And he brought the proper offering to the Lord. And God accepted that. But Cain, he had a work salvation. He had something that he had to go to work and till the ground and plant the seed and, and do the work and labor for him. But the other, that, uh, there was a sacrifice made. And there's a big difference. But a fool, a fool wants to uh, 
show off in church. He wants to get baptized. He wants to join the church. He wants to give an offering. He wants to do something for show. He wants to be a good person for his sins. That's a fool sacrifice. And God's going to look at that one day and He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. Yeah, but Lord, I did all these sacrifices for you. I, I joined the church and I was a member and I taught a Sunday school class and I got baptized and I gave a big offering. And the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Just like He said to Cain. That's a fool's sacrifice. Let's be quick to hear these words of wisdom. It says in verse in verse 1 again, it says, And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. When we come to the house of God, we ought to be more ready to hear than to act like a fool and giving of our false sacrifices and so that people will see us. And the reason why fools do this is because they take no consideration, the Bible says there, that they do evil. They don't consider the evil they're doing. They don't understand it. They can't see. First off, probably because they're blinded by Satan because they're lost and going to hell. That's the fool's sacrifice. Now that brings us to the next point. It seems a, a fool's steps. We seen the fool's sacrifice in verse 1. Now let's look at a fool's speech. A fool's speech. I've been guilty of this. Well, I can speak highly about this fool in the church because I've been the fool in the church many times. Hopefully you have it. But I know exactly what um, um, Solomon's talking about here. He's talking about a fool in the church because I can identify with these things. And it's sad to say, to be honest with you. Verses 2 through 3, it tells us about the fool's speech. Just look at it. It says, Be not rash. That means do not be quick or hasty with thy mouth. mouth. And uh, let not thine heart be hasty. See there, it defines itself. Word of God so, so plain. To utter anything before God. For God is in heaven. And thou upon earth, therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of businesses. Business and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. A fool's speech is vanity. It's vanity. It is known by two things. And I just I'm trying to make this real plain. It's known, first of all, by their big mouth. This is plain as I can get it. Just by their big mouth. They have a big mouth. You ever heard the um, um, statement? Uh, I've heard my mom say it. Uh, don't put your foot in your mouth. That's, that's saying, hey, you got a big mouth. You got to be careful what you're saying because you got a big mouth. You stick your foot in it. You stick your foot in it. And that's the uh, uh, the characteristic of a fool speech. He'll open his mouth wide, and uh, and boy, before you know it, he'll have his foot in his mouth. And God says, hey, we're not supposed to be putting our foot in the mouth. Our foot is not supposed to be in our mouth. This will be on the floor in the Brother Jackson's way, the way they are. Most of the time when I'm walking, my feet are on the floor. But many times, we'll open our mouth in the house of God, a fool will, and he'll stick his feet in his mouth. There's three things to keep us from having a big mouth. And they uh, should be practiced in, in this particular order to get to the root of the iniquity. And the first one is to have a clean heart. To have a clean heart. Look at there. It says in uh, verse 2, Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Part of the issue is, it is the heart. That's where it comes from. All of the uh, issues of the heart. Back, let's turn over to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 speaks of that. Look at it real quick and hold your place there in Ecclesiastes. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Uh, through 36 there we'll just read there there's several lot of verses there that talk about it but uh, in verse 34 it says O generation of vipers as Jesus calling people names by the way those people don't believe it Jesus called him by names he called him a viper I never called anybody a snake how can ye be an evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh what comes out of the mouth is coming from the heart. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. And it says, For by their words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Turn back over to Ecclesiastes, if you will. The Bible says... The heart has to be clean. This will keep us being a, uh, having a big mouth in the house of God. And keep us from being a fool and having a fool speech, which is vanity. That will come in and speaking bold and boastful things. And before long, putting your foot 
in your mouth. We need to have a clean heart so that we don't have the full speech in the house of God. He comes in boasting and saying things that um, should not be said. First John 1 9, if you do have this, well, it's very simple to correct it. It's just a matter of repenting, confessing our sins, as it says in 1 John 1 9. Not only should we have a heart that is clean that will correct this problem or keep us from having this problem, but then to have a tongue that is slow. Have a tongue that is slow. It says there, be not. Uh, uh, in verse 2, back over in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, rash uh, uh, with thy mouth, which means hasty. And let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Look over at James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 19. James here is speaking here. He says in verse 19 in chapter 1 of James. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man, let every man, that includes women, let every man and let every woman be swift to hear. That's quick to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. Quick to hear, slow to speak. That's what it says. We ought to be careful. We ought to be able to control the tongue, which is a, a very difficult thing to do sometimes. As James says over, I think it's in chapter 3, he talks about the tongue and how hard it is to tame the tongue. But we need to be careful. But if we go to the heart of the issue, which is of the heart itself, and clean out the heart, make sure that the root of the problem is clean, then our tongue will be a little bit slower to say certain things. And we'll be quicker to hear with our ear. Not only should we have a heart that is clean and a tongue that is slow, but we should have eyes that are focused. Eyes that are focused. That's what it says here. Just look at that. It says in verse 2 again, Be not um, rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Why? Why are we not supposed to? For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. If we're focused right and we're focused at looking at God, then we have to look up. Because that's where God is. That's where his throne is at. That's where we say that we're going one day. We're going to heaven. That we're going to go and meet him in the air. That's where he's coming from. He's not coming from below. He's coming from heaven. That's where our Lord and Savior is. That's where God is at. And if we have the proper focus with our eyes, We'll stop worrying about this. We'll stop worrying about what's under the sun, as Solomon said. And we'll be focused on what's above the sun and above in heaven and be focused on him. We need to have our eyes directed this way, not worried about things this way. So we need to have our heart clean. We need to have our tongue um, that is slow. We need to have our eyes that are focused. This will help us in having a big mouth and being a fool in the house of God. Not only the second um, way to demonstrate or to characterize this fool with his speech is not only with a big mouth, but a bunch, a bunch of words. In uh, verse, uh, and, uh, in verse, the end of verse two, there it says, "Therefore, because of your uh, rashness with your mouth and your hasty in your heart, because you're not focused with your eyes upon God in heaven, therefore let your let thy words be few." Don't have a bunch of words. Don't have a bunch of words. It says, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business. A multitude of business. The word dream here is a, a means of a vain fancy or a wild conceit. We'll cover that in just a minute in verses 4 and 5 because it comes back up again. Through the multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. A multitude. Boy, remember how Jesus spoke to the multitudes and he fed the multitudes of several thousand. You ever see somebody always just going on and talking and talking and talking and talking? I you know, like I do when I 